Hey guys, what is up? Steven here, gonna do a fun film breakdown for you today on Alabama interior offensive lineman Landon Dickerson. Really excited to get this one out to you. He's one of my favorite people, favorite offensive lineman to watch uh, in this draft. So physically imposing, and I cannot wait to get to this film breakdown. Before I get started on that, I did want to kind of just, you know, have a general discussion about how people view him and where he could land potentially in the draft, how that applies to the Chargers and all that good stuff. I think first and foremost, when you talk about Landon Dickerson, unfortunately, you have to talk about health. Um, everybody, everybody has kind of vaguely said like, well, he has health issues. So he tore his ACL, one of his ACLs back in uh, when he was a freshman in college. I'm not sure which one, honestly. Uh, those issues carried over to his sophomore year. He struggled with that again. He missed games as a junior uh, at Florida State. That's where he started his college career. Um, don't really know what he missed those games for that year. And then this season, obviously, he tore an ACL again. I don't know if it was the same one or if it was a different one, but he does have two ACL tears on his record, and his first one uh, obviously gave him some problems there. So that's the downside for Landon Dickerson. That's the negative of what you're getting with him, potentially someone that has never played a full season in college, let alone how that translates to the NFL. Now, of course, you know, some people just get injured in college and they don't get injured in, in the NFL because the, they know more about their bodies, the medical, uh, the medical services are, are you know, more effective in the NFL. The NFL is not going to rush people back like they like really happens in college. Uh, one of my friends who played football at the University of Utah had a bunch of knee issues in college and they rushed him back every single time and it just kept on popping up and popping back popping up so you know unfortunately that's just kind of what happens in college so I don't really know enough about Landon Dickerson's health to say if they are degenerative issues if they're causing problems throughout his career but it is kind of a concern on film when you watch his tape his tape pops you know i'm a big trey smith guy who also has issue health issues wyatt davis also has health issues he just tore his acl uh, although his issues are, are not as big as trey smith who has blood clots in his history and dickerson's who has multiple acl tears so the big three uh and then obviously you know you have elijah vera tucker depending on how you classify him but the big three in terms of the interior offensive linemen all have health issues which is not great for them but in terms of Landon Dickerson, he was recruited to Florida State as an offensive tackle. He played offensive tackle his first season as a freshman. He has started games at all five positions on the offensive line. Ben Fennell, shout out to him. He's the one who pointed that out. He's played left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, and right tackle. This past season at Alabama, or uh, Deontay Brown was suspended for the first two games, and Landon Dickerson started at left guard and then moved to center. So, incredibly versatile offensive lineman he is very large he's like six 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 five um and and so really like he probably could play tackle in a pinch but he doesn't have the requisite length and reach of a of a tackle you know when you think of offensive tackles typically you think of guys who are really tall really long really athletic and that's not really dickerson that's why he's viewed as a guard to me if you're looking at just the film and just the traits Landon Dickerson is a top 20 player in this class. He's got everything you could possibly want out of a center, out of a guard. And, you know, he was able to win over Nick Saban to a point where Nick Saban, you know, he had that awesome moment in the national championship game where Landon Dickerson came back in for the last couple plays and did the last snaps of the victory formation. That takes a lot of work to do in one year. And, and it's not like, you know, they had a regular offseason; everything was virtual, right? So, because of COVID. And so Landon Dickerson has all the leadership qualities. He did a lot of cool things at the senior bowl, even though he wasn't able to play. Uh, he's very physical. He's very mobile from the, from the guard standpoint, from a center standpoint. It's just that he's not, you know, he doesn't check all the boxes in terms of health. So maybe he's there for the Chargers at 47. I would highly doubt it. But if the Chargers are sitting there at 47, they're watching Landon Dickerson fall into the mid 30s. I would 100% run to a phone and make a trade to go up and get him because I genuinely do not think that he would be there at 47. You know, right between that 25 and 40 range is typically when we see the first two or three into your offensive linemen go. 
Um, like I mentioned, Elijah Vera Tucker, if teams view him, view him as a tackle, he will go sooner. If they view him as an interior offensive lineman, he will go later. But, you know, Creed Humphrey, Elijah Vera Tucker, Landon Dickerson, Wyatt Davis, Trey Smith, they will probably all be gone <laughs> before the Chargers pick at 47. So, you know, Wyatt Davis, maybe he team, seems like people are kind of souring on him a little bit. So uh, that's really one, the one to keep an eye on again, Trey Smith and his blood clot issues, maybe another one, but I'm fairly confident in saying that Creed Humphrey, um, Elijah Vera Tucker and Landon, Landon Dickerson will all be gone by the time they pick at 47. So definitely something to keep an eye on in terms of draft evaluation and how things change. That being said, let's get to this film because I am so excited about uh, Landon Dickerson's film. All right, here we go. All right, so let's get to this film. I cannot wait because this is, you know, Landon Dickerson is just an interior offensive lineman dream, man. He's so good at what he does. Generally speaking, when you're looking at an offensive lineman, there are three things that you really want to look for. First and foremost, how is his second level mobility? You want to be able to have a center be able to get up and clear linebackers out of the way. Secondly, you want to be able to make sure that they have a strong anchor, that they're not going to get bull rushed and take your center and put him in the quarterback's lap. You know, unfortunately, that happened a little bit too often with Dan Feeney, and it caused a lot of problems for, for Justin Herbert. So those are the first two things. And then the third thing in general for, for interior offensive linemen, you want to see if they are good at helping their teammates. You know, if they're free and they don't have anybody around them, do they go and knock somebody's teeth out? Do they go and help out? Do they go and, and stick on a nice double team? You know, that's really what separates Quentin Nilsson Quentin Nelson from everybody else is that he does all three of those things at a very, very high level. You know, he's got an incredibly strong anchor. He looks for work when he's free and he can get to the second level with the best of them. You know, you can, you can be a very solid guard or center. If you do two of those three, or frankly, if you even do one of those three, that's the problem with Dan Feeney. He doesn't do any one of those three very effectively, very consistently. So Landon Dickerson is definitely somebody that I have my eye on in this draft because I think he does all three of those things super, super well. It Again, it's just a help. But let's get to this film right here. Uh, Tyler, shout out to Tyler helping me out with the highlighting him. He's the center in all these plays, okay? This first one, I tweeted this video out, but he's going to be free. And look, you can already see him headhunting. And that's what you really want to see. Obviously not headhunting like the Saints and getting paid for bounties and hurting people. You know what I mean if you're watching this video. Um, but he's going to take his, like, he's making sure that no stunts are coming inside to him. That's really solid awareness. And then he's just going to go and lay somebody out. And then he's going to embarrass them and body slam them. He said a quote earlier this season, I believe at the Senior Bowl, their mentality and his mentality specifically at Alabama was just to bury people. He wanted other teams to give up and not have the will to go on. That's what you want out of an interior offensive lineman. Somebody that's going to come in and just, boom, bury you. That's what I like to see. Fired up about Landon Dickerson, man. So here he is again. This time, he's going to show that mobility. And again, with the tenaciousness. Look at him finish this block all the way to the whistle. He goes whistle to whistle, man. That's what you know about Landon Dickerson. That's what you like to see. And this is a hard block. You know, this defensive tackle, big number 94, you know, he's got to reach all the way to the opposite shoulder of big 94 right here. And Deontay Brown doesn't really do him any favors. I mean, he touches him barely. But look at him get this block right here, and then he's going to square him up. Like, that's elite footwork. That's elite mobility, elite drive. And the finish is just so, so good. You know, rooting a guy like that out on that kind of block and finishing it the way he did is so impressive. Again, you'll see his, his mentality, his ability to get to the second level. Look at him here, get one guy, you know, helping out Deontay Brown, who despite his big size is not <laughs> that great of a finisher. Look at him knock 94 over. And then he just keeps working and working and working until he finds somebody he can block. Now, you know, this, this uh, cornerback or whoever he is, 23, he's not involved in the play. But Landon Dickerson goes and he seeks him out and he wants to just hit people, man. I love it. I love the mobility. I love the mentality to finish this play. 
It's just what you see with Landon Dickerson. He finishes every single play he possibly can. Now I mentioned the mobility and, and the things that he does with his feet. This is an incredibly difficult block. And the Chargers don't really do this a whole lot uh, in terms of pulling the center out on the perimeter, you know, behind people. They like to let him get up first. Um, they used to do this with Mike, with Mike Pouncey the first couple of years that Mike Pouncey was around. But look at this block. Look at him get all the way around and make sure he gets his hands on this linebacker. Just a little thing, just a little shove. But he makes sure that that guy is not going to tackle Najee Harris. It's, if somebody's going to tackle Harris, it's not going to be number zero, who I believe is KJ Britt, um, the linebacker who used to, who was at the senior bowl. So just a really effective, subtle thing that gets a running back, you know, an extra 15 yards, you know, like the, if KJ, if Landon Dickerson doesn't hit KJ Britt, he could tackle Dickerson or he could tackle Harris, excuse me, for, you know, a, a short gain and, and Harris credit to him. He's able to make that cornerback or safety miss. But if Dickerson doesn't hit that linebacker right there you know he, he's making that tackle for a gain of five six yards instead it turns into a gain of 20 25 yards just a, a fantastic job by dickerson and of course harris again does he look for help does he go look for work and man he's so so strong you know and, and this isn't like you know he's doing this against somebody small like that's that's a big man i think that's number 94 again nope i'm just kidding number three what the heck Anyways, um, but great footwork. You know, you see him tagging Deontay Brown, making sure that he doesn't let somebody come in between the two of them. And then once he knows Deontay's solid, he goes and knocks somebody's teeth out. I love it. Just fantastic. This is all from one game. There's more clips of like this from other pro from other games of his, but this is just one game and it's just fantastic. Here you'll see the mobility again on display and watch him finish this linebacker off. I love it. You know, again, Deontay Brown pulling out on the edge, man. It's just not, it's not pretty. Um, but great mobility from Landon Dickerson. You see him slowing down, making sure Deontay gets out in front of him. Love that play from, from big land in 69. All right. Again, with the second level mobility, this is a very difficult block. You see him, you see him pull one way, pull the other. Now you just see him go downhill and attack this linebacker. So, when he snaps this ball, the linebackers right in between uh, in the B gap with uh, the right guard and the right tackle where Landon hits him is a good distance away. And he, look at this plate, look at this receiver. So the way that this receiver is blocking or going to block, that tells me that that linebacker number 21 is number eight's responsibility. But look at Landon, man, look how strong and fast he is right here. It's just, it's a great thing to see from a center. And then look at him keep going. He wants to finish. He wants to play every single play, whistle to whistle. And those are the kind of guys that you want on your offensive line. All right, I think this is the last play. The mobility here, watch him just, <laughs> he says, see a number zero, you're not making this play. Um, this is something that the Chargers do a lot in terms of screens. You know, you have the delayed block here from Landon Dickerson and big number 55 here. And the Najee Harris ends up getting tackled by number 13. So if 55 had done his job like Landon Dickerson was doing here. You know, Najee Harris is potentially getting a 35 yard play right here, but just so strong one simple strike on a safety and he goes flying. All right. This is the last play here. This is some high level awareness. And this is something that I think that a lot of the Chargers offensive linemen struggled with, specifically Forrest Lamp and Trey Pipkins. When you have multiple rushers coming in your direction, like it, it's easier for it's easy for me to sit here and say this, but you have to be decisive in what you're doing. You have to be able to say, you know what, I've got two rushers over me. I know my big left guard is going to come help and pick one as well. I have to pick one. You know, it would be one thing if I picked number 44 and number zero gets the sack, but at least I picked one. At least I was decisive. And that's the difference here. Landon Dickerson decides he's going after number zero. He knows that Deontay Brown is coming over to help. And he, th and he knows that he's got to take the more dangerous rusher. And that happened to be number zero right here. Now, Deontay Brown uh, and Alex Leatherwood could definitely hold their own down here. And so he's going to go for number zero. 
And again, you see him go and he goes in for the kill. Like he gets number zero on the ground and then look at him. He tries to just dive on it and punish him. I love this guy. Landon Dickerson is so much fun to watch because he has, he checks all the boxes of what you want to see out of an interior offensive lineman. Again, he gets to the second level. He's got a strong anchor. He's incredibly physical at the point of attack and he looks for work. If not for the health concerns, we'd be talking about Landon Dickerson as a potential top 15 pick. If Landon Dickerson had not torn his ACL, I would not be opposed to be talking about him as a, as an option for number 13 overall. Now, you know, having multiple knee surgeries, it's not great. Right. So in a world where the chargers could potentially trade down to number 20 or number 21, I would take Landon Dickerson right there. Injury risk and all, if they can trade down, you know, 13, it's probably a little rich to me. I still think that they need to take an offensive tackle because that really has been the biggest problem for the chargers. Um, but again, if I were, if I'm sitting in the twenties, like the Pittsburgh Steelers who are potentially losing Marquise Pouncer to retirement, I know that they have a tackle problem too, but I would think the Steelers would take a strong look at Landon Dickerson. Same thing with the Kansas city chiefs. If he gets there to 32, we just saw them get destroyed by the Tampa Bay defensive line in the super bowl. If there are no really good tackles, like if you're sitting there at 32 and you're choosing between Alex Leatherwood and Landon Dickerson, I'm choosing Landon Dickerson to fortify the middle of my offensive line. Hopefully you have Mitchell Schwartz, Eric Fisher come back and healthy. And you have Lucas Nyang who you drafted last year and then he opted out, which kind of screwed them. Um, But so to me, Landon Dickerson is going to be a first round pick. It's just a matter of where, because, you know, once you get past pick 20, People, teams don't really care about the medical as much as teams in the top 15 because in the top 15, you need a sure fire starter who's going to be there for two contracts. Like that's the goal of everybody in the top 15. And at top 20, you're just trying to take an, a dart throw on an upside player. And Landon Dickerson has elite upside. It's just a matter of if he can stay healthy or not in the NFL. All right. So I had so much fun doing that one. I hope you guys did too. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like all the videos, comment if you learned something. Uh, I can't wait to be doing more of these videos for you guys. Uh, sorry for the, the late start, but I wanted to make sure I got a good basis of which offensive lineman I'm really liking this draft. And Lander Dickerson is clearly into your offensive lineman number one for me. And I hope that this video kind of swayed you that way as well. Um, and stay tuned for the next one, guys. Thanks for tuning in. All right, bye.